Hi, friends. I decided to have our close friend vids more like live videos where I keep the editing at a minimum as if you're here with me, actually. You know what I'm saying? So try something new. You can let me know down below how you like it. I just wanted to make some distinctions between the videos I upload to my main channel and have the vibe slightly different on my membership channel, right? We're a little bit close-knit and I just wanted to present more of that mood here by keeping the editing down and again, speak as if I am doing a live with you, which are a lot of fun, by the way. I would love to get into what we pulled on the community board, Autumn Face. And why don't we go over the makeup products I chose for the look, going in with Danessa's Blurring Skin Balm. Funny enough, <laughs> every time I edit my thumbnails, it's like, okay, the foundation I'm using clearly is a little too light for me now. And although it might match my face, it's not matching my body. So I needed to go with number seven. Right now, my deepest foundation shade. So we're gonna see how that goes. I have number six on standby for under my eyes. I don't know how well the Lancome will appear when pairing it with the Blurring Balm in seven. That's the thing. It might be a little too contrasting. We'll see how it goes. And update, because of one of our fam members on Instagram, they were so nice to let me know that the Chanel Equinox blush in Mauve Rose that I was unable to buy at the time because it was sold out in store, Infinite Child underscore DD, hey, 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 that they had let me know it was available at Macy's yesterday. Of course I bought it. So I had to, it was on my mind, it was on my noggin, but we will still use the coral one in conjunction with Gucci's Warm Berry. This combination is stellar. And I cannot wait to then compare Mauve Rose to Gucci's Warm Berry to see how they look. I feel like Warm Berry will probably run a little more plum. That's just my speculation. For the bronzer, I have House Labs on standby because I do adore this color. I don't know if we need bronzer for this autumn look because I am relying or will rely on Warm Berry to create that sculpt. But for the eyeshadow palette, I went with Flora Kalahari. It's just extraordinary. And I'm kicking myself for not including this in my autumn palette video. I don't think I did, but it was in contention. It was in contention. But I wanted to give it some love for our autumn look, autumn look video for today. And I brought out Pat McGrath's, what is the official name of this? The Chromalux Artistry Pigment in Rouge Rebellion. An amazing color, right? Ooh, you wanna see my nails? We got the Hollow Taco Fall down to earth bundle, excuse me, in brick red with the fallen flake top coat and then fallen flake top coat on top of nightshade. And I'm still waiting for the moon cat. We're still waiting for the moon cat. I haven't even received a shipping update. It hasn't even shipped yet, so we'll see how that goes. But now that we have our products in place, we got the game plan set, it's time for you to come in a little closer. <gasps> That's enough. We had to include that because this is the close friends membership. You know what I mean? With that said, blurring balm on and skin sobering update. I did apply SPF today as I went out for a run and it was middle of the day. Although cloudy, still wanted that protection because I only wear a visor when going out to run, so therefore the size of my face will be exposed. That's why I decided to apply the Nivea sun gel, the water gel, something something. I, I've been using it forever. Does it work? I really don't know, but I'm trying to do my best to provide as much protection to my skin as I can. So let's go in with seven, and I am using Sonia G's Jumbo Base Dense Brush, which I find favorable with this type of texture. And it might seem 
super tan from the get but this is kind of what's matching my the rest of my body right now <laughs> because if i keep the skin tone directly as is it just looks too light with the rest of my body and it's apparent when i do my thumbnails so i have to adjust the saturation a little bit which is hilarious when editing the photos I do have some blemishes here. This was fresh from yesterday. I should not have touched it, but of course I did. I'm looking a little orange though on camera. I could even this out with number six for sure. Number six, which I hit pan, still have a lot more product to go. Maybe the more neutral tone can kind of even out what number seven is doing, is doing, excuse me. Sometimes I'll go in with six on the center of my face and then seven on the outer perimeters. But this isn't bad. This isn't bad. I don't mind the warmth just for now. Ideally, when it when we get into autumn, I you know, I'll probably be a little lighter overall. We'll go in with the Lancome and we'll grab my brow pencil oh, excuse me might as well this is in medium cool 350 bis cool has a little bit of a peachy undertone but my fear is against number seven if it's gonna look a little too like ah clearly <laughs> lighter than what I have on the rest of my face I've enjoyed the line comb I think it's a fantastic product. I enjoy how it evens out my under eye circles. Although I would say it's more so, they're not dark, dark circles, but there is a difference in color from the rest of my face compared to what my under eyes are doing. And the peachiness does add a bit of brightness. I do have a neutral undertone concealer also, I don't use it as much because although it does lighten the area of my under eye, it doesn't brighten in the same manner like the peachy, the peachiness does for me. And why I'm compelled to still try the Natasha Denona concealer. Because in the lineup, not only do you have the concealer colors, but you have corrector colors as well. I still probably will just buy a concealer shade and not a corrector as I feel I don't need the correction. That intense like maybe orange undertone or orange color that people rely on to completely even out their under eyes. I personally believe I don't have severe under eye circle problems. So I just need, I think, a concealer that has a little bit of peachiness in the undertone to combat any unevenness that I have. Albeit not intense, it's still there. When, for the under eyes, powder anyway, I've still been using Pat McGrath's under eye blurring powder. This is in the yellow shade, hard to see with the, with the light. I also have medium, but I think my medium powder broke. Because this is such a delicate powder that if it gets tossed around in your makeup bag or you're not careful with how you store it, if you throw it around in your drawer, if it gets knocked around in your drawer, it's going to break because it's very air light and whipped. I just apply a little bit to set the concealer a tad, just a touch. And going in with brows now, during our last live, actually, I had contemplated getting my brows microbladed again. I find that it's simpler in terms of the routine, and oh, I gotta cut those. It's simpler just to have the brows done. Yeah. And I'm also uh, not fascinated. Fascinated is not the right word. I am intrigued by brow powders. I do believe they deliver a much softer vibe for the brows, and I find if my brows are microbladed, I could rely on the powder because I got a lot of unevenness here. I don't know if you could see that on camera where I do need a pencil to flatten that out. With powders, 
it will give color, but it would not appear as defined. However, if I got my brows microbladed, I feel I could get away with just the powder to add extra coloring and volume since the microblading will take care of that uneven base. So that's kind of what I'm hypothesizing to work. Will it? I don't know. But that is an extra expense I have to consider. I believe you will be typically on a six month cycle. I'm not entirely sure. It's been quite some time since I got my brows microbladed, right? Naturally, touch ups will cost less than the first uh, appointment or session because for touch ups, the shape is already there. The technician is simply filling in the gaps that have no more of the color. But the initial appointment will be more expensive because they have to, I guess, shape or not guess. I know I went to Evertrue. They were very kind in offering me a comped session. And in the first session, they map out the brows, right? And they kind of draw it out. They ask the client how they would like them to look, where the arch will be, if you want it long and short, right? And then after that, for touch-ups, it won't be as expensive. Kind of how I remember lash extensions to be. On the first get, is expensive, right? Because you're just getting them for the first time. You have to decide what type of lash you want, the length, the thickness and all that, the style. After that, once you've decided on what lashes you like initially and you decide to keep that same style, the touch-ups are less expensive. And, you know, I really did enjoy going to Ebenezer Lashes in New York City to get my lashes done. And because I am wearing less makeup, it is now under consideration to get lashes again, lash extensions. And when I did get them, something I didn't realize at the time was because I was wearing makeup a lot, I was doing YouTube a lot more. Uh, it was more like a three to four uh, video frequency, maybe three, I can't quite recall, that removing the eyeshadow was trickier because the eye makeup remover that is oil-based that I typically use to remove shadow can break down the lash extension glue and it could lessen the life of the lashes, thus requiring you to visit the salon more often because the lashes are gonna fall out faster. And I didn't really, I didn't realize that. I'm like, ooh, this might be an issue. Although I was very careful when removing the shadow. Now I'm thinking that I'm trying to condense my shadow days or my overall makeup days to three days a week because now I'm not relying on regular facial cleansers because of my skin sobering journey and I use Lysoap, soap, which is drying to the skin and it could be exceptionally drying when used every day. So if I could lower the frequency of my washing, uh, then maybe I can do lashes again if I'm only wearing eyeshadow three days out of the week. You know what I mean? So that's that's in the works. But I got to budget all this stuff. You know what I'm saying, close friends? Because this adds up. <laughs> it adds up. All right. Off to our blush. Gucci time. Warm berry. Oh, the mauve rose is on its way. I ordered it yesterday. Cannot wait to compare the two right? Because I am dying to find out how this looks like. In regards to autumn makeup, I typically gravitate toward plum, wine shades, terracotta shades, of course, clay tones that arguably can be worn in the summertime, right? To create that toasty look. I feel that those same shades just take on a different role during autumn, especially if you pair it with an eyeshadow color or color palette that's more golden, orange, red, right? And of course, you could go super monochromatic and have the eyes burgundy, which is why I adore Natasha Denona's retro palette. 
as much as I do enjoy the newly released I Need a Nude, I wasn't as, uh, let me, how do I say this? It's a beautiful palette. I'm still more enthusiastic about Yucca. I am. I am. I don't know if I Need a Nude will be in my top five because I didn't even include Glam in my top five. You know what I mean? Something to think about, something to think about. Okay, Coral, Coral Time. This is my Hokuro Nagi Cheek Brush. It has, I think, the perfect amount of pickup. It is a Gray Squirrel and Sokoho Goat Blend. Isn't that pretty? Because the warm berry just carries a little more color from the hollows. And then you got, bam, coral on the center of the face. It's lovely. I think it's so pretty. Okay, off to our shadow. Now, because I am going in with the Chromalux, I don't think I will need to apply primer because this kind of is serving as primer in a way, in a way. And I am, I guess this color will dictate the overall look of the shadow because it is this burgundy magenta color. I will set the crease first, however. I am going in with bare lids, yes I am, it's fine. Blender Pro with, ooh, Mm -mm -mm. I think I want to apply this taupe shade first to set up the look. First start off with a, a coolish taupe shade because I want to then use that more burnt clay matte in the palette to add that intensity to the outer lid. But this is our first shade so we're, ooh that's such a pretty color. This is such a lovely color. It translates differently on the lids. I wonder which, or more so, I wonder what the next eyeshadow palette will be from Byredo. Because we got, we just got Remembrance, yeah? That is an exceptional palette. I don't know. Where, where can they go from there? It's like, maybe they'll go the total opposite direction and do something like Prismic with how, um, when Isamea was the artistic director for the beauty department, or if I totally didn't say that role right, she was responsible for the makeup. <laughs> she was responsible for the makeup for Byredo. I wonder what, oh, I forgot her name too, the current beauty director for Byredo, what she'll decide to do if they are releasing another palette. I would love to see a brand do like a, like a Santa Fe type of desert thing, you know, the turquoise and the clay shades, oh, adobe shades, something like that. My goodness. Okay, so going in with this color and I'm tapping with my jumbo blender these shadows are beautifully soft and just makes it so easy because I they didn't take anything at all. This formula practically blends itself is extraordinary. Crazy. I just like to lightly whip and it kind of like finds itself where it needs to go. For the outer corner, however, We'll use a smaller brush as I don't want this toasty shade to carry or drop too low. There we go. Ooh, the haze. I love the haze, don't you, fam? It's so great. And this taupe shade was the perfect first step to this look. It's incredible. Ugh. I can't get enough of this palette, okay. Here's the thing, this has a little magenta in here. I'll swatch so you can see. This is the Chroma Lux, okay. And this shade from Flora Kalahari is more burgundy. You see, so the Chroma Lux has that magenta and the Flora shade is more like, next to the Chroma Lux looks like a little fiery orange, right? 
I'm like thinking in my head. I can start off with this color and then layer the flora and see where it goes. I'm trying to look for my, you know what? I think I wanna use my Fusion Blender, definitely. Let's pick up some of this shade and carefully build on the lash, excuse me, words, on the lid, there we go, we're back on track. And this will appear definitely more magenta next to that matte because the matte runs more red-brown, which is fine. You know, you can do what you want. I just feel these shades scream autumn. I wonder if Natasha Denona will produce, create another Metropolis moment. That was, oh, it was so exciting because before then, I think she was celebrating, it did release in 2018 or 2019, celebrating the anniversary of her 28 Pam palettes that just broke the eyeshadow internet when Nikki Tutorials used them things for the first time. Actually, if I recall, she didn't use them. She just swatched them on one of her videos and did something else entirely, used something else entirely. And everyone was like, what? What are those shadows? And that was it. Because at the time, Natasha made those palettes for her students to just have all those shades in one palette. It wasn't actually, if, if I'm getting this correct, it wasn't actually for the makeup consumer, like the the regular makeup wearer, it was for makeup pros. But the way Nikki presented it was like, you know, this is for everyone. And Tasha's like, oh my God. <laughs> and here we are, or there we were with Metropolis. Oh, if she could do another Metropolis. I did say or wished for a midi star. Ooh, but if she did like, the star version of Metropolis, fam. Would you absolutely go nuts? I know I would. You could totally produce 28 shades from the star concept. Are you kidding me? <sighs> Don't even think about it. I know it's too much. It's too much. Let's go in with this shade over the Chromalux. For reinforcement also, and I'm using my Jumbo Blender one of the, uh, excuse, I was gonna say Natasha, switch, Sonia's, Sonia's best brush designs. I reach for this so much because it could apply shadow on the lid. It can blend it through the crease, the outer corner. It's wonderful, absolutely wonderful. Maybe she'll produce a smaller version of the Jumbo Blender with her fundamental eye set. Are you dying to know what she'll create or what she has already created? Because I'm sure it ha it has had to be in production already. I cannot wait to find out. In a corner time, I'm looking at this this uh like pink copper moment. Ooh, excuse me, for the inner corner. so fiery so fiery we can also layer one of the lighter gold shades on top to brighten it up a bit because i know so we don't lose just like that sheen or it can look distinctly more highlighted okay eh yes i'm carrying that first copper shade through the inner arc. This is a great area of your eye. I know I have the real estate. You have similar real estate as I do. Carry an extra color here. You know what I mean? It's Look how that kind of pulls the gradient higher and makes it more pronounced. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Smaller brush, my refer 23. Punching that gold color, this more antique gold here, lower inner corner, yes. And as for the lash line, or the rest of the lash line, 
I think we can commit to, I'm gonna use this shade. I, I was originally going to carry this matte through, but I think having this metallic is a better choice as it's nice to have something shiny, shiny top and bottom. Yes. And also the, the nature of the color itself delivers beautiful smoke to the under eyes. If you wanted it to appear more smoky, however, let's carry, carry, or we'll carry the color with our mini booster and take that taupe shade under everything. You don't have to do this step though. You know I love me a hazy sick eye. <laughs> I love me a hazy, sick eye. I love how this is turning out so far. I absolutely adore it. I would like to apply a little more blush. I feel like I could bring in, you know what I'm thinking? I'm thinking I need to bring in some Paradise Venus. I feel like I need to look a little more toasty. The coral is pretty. 100%. The coral is pretty. I feel like I need some a little more red. I could do Danessa's uh, Jubilee for sure. Paradise. No, not that one. Let me tell you something, fam. It has been so much easier finding things now that I've reorganized my makeup because before it was discourage it was almost discouraging to film because of the process i had to go through in remembering what where everything was and then when i had to put everything back i didn't have a place to put anything back because it was still a mess i didn't have the room or the space it was weird now i have the opportunity or i feel more encouraged and excited to film because I could find stuff quickly now. I know where everything is. I know what I have. And I have some place to put everything away. So cleanup is a breeze. Even though if, if you were to see my desk right now, it looks like a, like a disaster, but it's a quick disaster to, to cover. Like I could put everything away in a flash now because everything has a place. See how that works? Here's the thing. Back to blush. I already have blush on. Picking a brush, a gray squirrel one. This is my Hokuro Sora series brush because I don't want that much color since I have color on here already. I just need like a, but that's Paradise Venus for you, man. I just need a lighter serving of it. Ooh, ooh, ooh. I don't know if this was a good choice to place the color this low. What do you think? When it comes to fall winter blush placement, I do tend to take it higher, but hmm. I'm going to nudge a little bit more here on the hollows. That's nice. All right, we got some, we got something. Highlighter though, what are we gonna do for a highlighter? Ooh, do 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 do. I think I wanna go in with my stick because the Danessa Blurring Balm, since it's supposed to combat excess oil and sweat, I don't think it's ideal to place a powder highlighter on top of that texture because it's not gonna look melted and smooth. With the duo stick, I could go in with the clear balm side first to set up that tack a little bit and then flip to the golden shimmer side. And I feel that will have a much better application. It will look smoother and more seamless. There we go. Oh, that's pretty. That's pretty. 
The Pamagrav Duo Highlighter Sticks are clutch, man. I think it's one of her best products for cream highlighter. I mean, you, you can't you can't go wrong with this. Although I, I understand it might not be like beam beam alien highlight from outer space, but I do think it's the perfect finish for like a more sophisticated, but that, that's shiny. I think that's shiny. Tell me what you think down below. That's shiny still for me. My goodness. Let's take our Sora, Ashura. I like to whip around the borders so everything looks together. Take the finger around the edges here. All right, all right, all right. That's looking good, it's looking good. Lashes time. Another reason why I'm considering <laughs> fake lashes. Or I should say lash, lash extensions, lash extensions. I liked how my lashes looked when I had them done. I look at old photos, which by the way, my gosh, my iPhone gallery is full. Okay, we need to fix that. Another, another day, another task for another day. But let me tell you, um, when I saw those photos with my lash extensions, I'm like, that looks nice. That looks pretty nice. And not, I'm not shaming anyone who does this. It's just an observation, fam. I think it's interesting when individuals get those thick lashes, right? Like them super thick lashes where I feel definitely warrants eyeshadow. I do feel it look a little strange to me. It's just my opinion. To have all that lash and no shadow. It's like, it's too glam. It's too glam to go solo <laughs> or to appear natural. But I, I get that might be a sacrifice one has to make if they need that volume and thickness so for when they wear the eyeshadow it's fine but when they don't it's like so intense i'm like my gosh that's a lot of lash <laughs> that's a lot of lash and it just looks a little strange to me i i do feel there's like a middle ground now the whole lashes thing it's it's just more mainstream and I feel you could definitely find a length and thickness that looks great on both bare lids and eyeshadow lids. These, I'm not, this is what happens when we don't wait for the glue to get tacky. The Ardell's Naked Lashes in 421. These are my favorite. The band is like the invisible band type. And for me, easy to apply. Well, it doesn't seem like that right now because I should have waited for the glue to get tacky. That's one of the main tips for fake lashes. If you try to apply the band when the glue hasn't set a little bit, it's like slip and slide city. It doesn't want to stay, it's a pain. But once you get it on there, you use your finger to press the band on the skin much better. It started off like a disaster, but it did not end in a disaster, and that's all that matters. Here we go. Other side. Heck yes. I also uh, did not apply mascara the reason why I don't is because when I do, it's hard for me to see where to place the band because the lashes are up. So I guess it really all depends on what you're more comfortable doing. Applying the fake lashes first. Oh my. Nope, we gotta do this one again. You apply the lashes first and then mascara afterwards, or mascara first. I prefer to do mascara afterwards. 
Believe it or not, however, I don't think you can really notice my lashes without the mascara. You probably could if you were like in real close. <laughs> All right, so let's learn from our lesson and wait for this to get tacky. And we still have to decide on a lip color. I already have one in mind. I probably will go with a Suku. Oop, gotta clean my nose. A Suku lip fluid fog. Fluid fog? Yes. Fluid fog. In 08, if I could find it. Now I do have a Suku drawer. I think I put it in there. And Suku is sending me their new foundation. I cannot wait. I do hope I got the shade match correct. It's always tough to decide, to covering myself, I'm sorry, what shade I am in the Suku line. Although I did go buy my old cream foundation shade, which was 040. So that's what I requested for the new one. Isa mascara on the bottom. Oh, I do have the Isam lip palette. Maybe we could use that. Definitely gotta hit the bottom lashes with some mascara. Taking a little bit here on the inner corner to melt, so to speak. But I think I have to press the ends down a little bit more. There we go. It's a little better. Yes. As for the lips, I did mention the Isam, the Isam lip palette, but I kind of want to do this. Suku drawer, where are you? Let's see here. What do we got? What do we got? Ooh, we got this. That's pretty. I'm looking zero one. Zero one. That might be something. Hold on. I think this Len leans, I think I say lend, a little pink. But that's not bad. There is a color I have though, hold on. There is a, a shade. You know, remember the Suku shades that came out, the, all the fall colors? There we go. There, here we. He, that this is it. This is it. Okay. That fall Suku sheer matte release, like with all these shades, I think there might be one that is going to mesh well with what we got going on. I just gotta find it. <laughs> oh, this. Hold on. This could be it. I'm gonna put that on standby. Sheer matte in 07. Yes. Ooh, what's this? This, that. That might be a little plummy, we'll see. I love this shade. This beige right here. Nope. Ooh, this might be it. This could be something. This wine color. Except I feel the eyes are reading a little more burgundy. This is a little too pink, but that's beautiful though. For spring, for spring. I'm looking at, yes, yes. The lit fluid fog, okay. All right, so these are our contenders. Okay. This is the Lit Fluid Fog. It's like orange leaning. Kind of reminds me of Dragon from 
Lisa Eldridge. However, I am thinking about this shade. I'm thinking about that shade. I feel that'd be beautiful with what we got going on right now on the face. And then there's this plum shade. I think I want to go in with the brown. We got to do the brown. Every time I take off a lipstick with foundation on, I have my concealer brush on standby so that there's not, there's like not a space between my lip and where I removed just to kind of move that makeup down. Okay. Sheer Matte 07. Hmm. <gasps> Oh, wow. I forgot. I forgot. I forgot how beautiful this freaking color is. It's insane. It's absolutely insane. Just the smokiness of it. Is outrageous. Excited. I need to bring these colors to the front, okay? Gotta go through that tray again. Oh my goodness. We gotta put on the lash again. I forgot what year that the sheer matte lipsticks first released. It assuming because of the shades, I think it released for fall winter one year. I mean my gosh, this is incredible. Shame on me for not wearing this more often. And a reason why I haven't bought Lisa's Velveteens yet, because I know I have these lipsticks. I have a bunch. And, excuse me, the Velveteens, because they're liquid, I don't know how often I would wear liquid lipstick. Although I am confident that Lisa's formula is a lot more comfortable than like ABH's liquid lipstick formula that released years ago. Like that's, that's not what we're dealing with. You know what I mean? Okay, here we go. Let's see. Better. It's always the corner. It's always the freaking corner. Okay, better. All right. Cool beans, cool beans. And here is the finished look close friends. I am thrilled with how the final look turned out, especially everything coming to a beautiful finale with the Suku Sheer Matte Lipstick in 07. I could not think of a better color to pair with the eyes and the cheeks and the eyes, my goodness. I just adore the smokiness and that we kind of went monochromatic, which I'm not mad about. We could have went olive, we could have went a little more, I don't know, moss green. There were def plum, wine, right? Even eggplant purple, like the nightshade in uh, color from Hollow Tacos nail polish line. So there were so many ways we could go, but I'm happy with this, right? Let me know, we could always do another autumn inspired look. Perhaps we can vote on what color spectrum, right? If the next one is more, green, eggplant, maybe golden, you know, let me know down below. I would love to hear your thoughts on this look and for future autumn look ideas. Uh, stay tuned for 
a few things. Uh, by now, you have already seen the I Need a Nude Comparisons ad free before I release it to public. And I plan to do the same thing with my Moonlit Seduction 6 look video. I will have that for you ad free for like the first 10 to 12 hours and then release it to public. So to, for you to get a chance to watch it without any ads. And yeah. I think that's about it. So let me know what other ideas you have down below. I would love to do another live in September and who knows at that point what new products we'll have released. I'm sure we'll have lots to talk about. So until then, close friends, take care and I will see you soon.